this is certainly another episode of the most recommended YouTubers for 2024. <coughs> and uh, yes, yes, hello everybody, it's Foxy speaking, and uh, in this episode of the most recommended YouTubers, this one for the 2024 calendar year, the YouTuber I should be representing, and who I certainly believe truly deserves to be one of the most recommended YouTubers for this calendar year, is one lady who, oh my goodness, I am truly wishing I had encountered her many years ago. I only just encountered her back in October of 2023, I think it was, was when I first encountered her. And we've been good friends ever since. This lady is none other, than the, none other than that of Annabelle and her wonderful, dearly loved husband, Gregopedia. A fantastic couple based over in New Jersey in the United States of America. Fantastic US state to be in, I would imagine. Um, It's Fortune Cookies Tarot by Annabelle is her channel's name, but I will double check. Uh, Yes, it is Fortune Cookies Channel by Annabelle. Yes, that's the name of the channel. So, um, why I, I conceivably believe that Annabelle deserves the representation is because, you know, she does brilliant content. She's very welcoming and very, you know, kindly welcoming to all of uh, her viewers who encounter both hers and Gregopedia's confines of content. <coughs> you know, even though she does say some rather unusual things to her Gregopedia, describing him as her giant, given their five feet two and six foot four inch height, so that is quite a difference, you know. Well, because six foot four, you know, that's more than a foot taller than she is, and only a little five feet two. I'm not making, trying to make fun of it or anything, I'm not trying to attack anything here, but somebody tell me how it works out. How she, how Gregopedia lives with Annabelle, regarding him as her, her giant. And I, th you know, well, we shall see, but I'm sure he doesn't take too much offence to it, but, you know, oh well. But I think he's an interesting character, Gregopedia, despite not having seen what he looks like as of, as of yet. But Annabelle, in a way, reminds me of me a little bit because we've both got fair-skinned with a full head of dark brown hair. A lot of people may confuse me for having black hair, but actually, in truth, my hair is dark brown. But it's just very dark brown to the point where it's nearly black. But if one looks at my hair closely, you would see it's not entirely black, it's dark brown. 
and we've both got dark brown eyes. That's another captivated distinction we've both got. And she's actually... She's a love... And what's... I think what could um, explain why Annabelle herself is such a lovely character when it comes to representing her content and whenever we come on board her content is, you know... You know, she is a mother herself, she's got children, and the children, no matter how old her children are, they're still regarded as her babies, at least I think so, either her babies or her little girls and little boys, no matter how much they've grown up, you know. Some parents are like that in that loving way. I mean, I don't know if she's overprotective of them or not, I don't know. But uh, but she does regard them as her girls and boys, or little bo girls or little boys, you know. So... Normally it's tarot psychic reading what she does. Not everybody is interested in that sort of insight. I mean, I've never had, I've never thought about taking up psychic tarot reading. Uh, would I do it? Um, no, I wouldn't do that personally, but I'm always more than happy to be a psychic tarot listener. I'm always happy to be a listener, but not so much a reader for it and all that. Not something I would personally want to do, but I'm always happy to be the read, the listener, and always watch her content with her giving out the reading, because it's in, she does provide an interesting insight when it comes to, you know, certain celebrities, or natural disaster events, or elections, pol certain politics. She doesn't go far too deeply into politics, but sometimes she does. I don't know if she... If there's ever been a time where Annabelle has gone deeply into politics, particularly on, on the American side of politics, as she is an American herself, American but partially Italian, as I too have very partially got a little bit of Italian in me as well. And a lot of people always confuse me for being either Italian or French because of what... <laughs> Because of what I look like, you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. That's always the funny, it's quite funny in a way, because I've heard it so many times for so many years now. Yes. But it, it happens to be, you know, but I'm quite philosophical about that, really, when people confuse me for being another nationality, much to one's certainty of confusion and all the rest of it. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I, but though one might think it's fairly serious, serious stuff whenever somebody like Annabelle or any person, any individual, any of any nationality may do a psychic tarot reading on various events and things, or upcoming events and upcoming political elections or political uh, political duties, political engagements, that sort of thing. Some might think it's fairly serious. Well, one side can be a little serious, yes. One side interesting, and then there's another side which brings a, a far better, greater depth to the... Um, to the side of the of the story, of the reality of the story and things, if one could dare might explain all of that. But another one of the greatest things since encountering lovely Annabelle are some of are many of the wonderful new friends I have encountered since uh, encountering Annabelle herself. Yet, uh, uh, oh. No, but there is some treasuring moments within a certain captivated distinctions in some various bits of pieces and all that. One of the most treasuring moments since encountering Annabelle herself was encountering one of my most wonderful new friends, Maureen, or wifey as she is known. Oh, honestly, isn't she a lovely lady? Oh. 
she's lovely, married to a wonderful husband who's a good, who was in the American Marines himself, as far as I'm certain. They live both, both live a very happy life together. They've got two wonderful daughters who, are, who no matter how much they've grown up, they'll always be my wonderful friend Marine's little girls. And she's also a grandmother herself, too. And what's on, more astonishing on another astonishing note is that her mother, who's still very much alive as of 2024, but her father went a good few short years ago, sadly, is that um, given the fact that Marine herself is a grandmother, her, mother, her surviving mother is a great-grandmother, which I think, in one way or another, means quite a lot to uh, Marine herself. <coughs> in one way or, or another, really. <laughs> and she said some really very, very nice things to me. Some of the nicest things this lovely Marine had said to me was, I once described what I looked like to her. This was before she actually even saw what I looked like. And she said, he said, you are very handsome. <laughs> and then she ended up even saying that to me after she saw what I looked like. And I said, and every time she says that I'm quite handsome to other people, I say, well, thank you, Maureen. I said, very few people think that of me now these days, but I used to get it a lot when I was younger and when I was 130 pounds of weight at the time, which I was that weight many years ago, but not anymore. I'm, I'm bigger than that now. But Maureen would end up saying, oh, nonsense, you are handsome. That's a lovely thing. Some very nice, lovely things, she said. And she even commended me on a funny Robert the Cat story I once did. And she was like, I would have liked to have seen a kitty in a taxi cat cab boot. <laughs> well, that would be funny in one part, but some people might find it rather scary or a little bit odd. <laughs> and it was a funny thing she once said. I was asking Annabelle how you, it was a little odd actually. I asked this quite oddly. I said to Annabelle, well, how would you feel if a seven-foot guy pursued you or chased you around the street, something like that? And Marine was like, Well, Foxy, I may be a little bit odd, but I bonk Mr. Seven-Foot on the head until he shrinks to the, to the size of a very, very small man, something like that. <laughs> Honestly, that was brilliant. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and another captivated distinction and a treasuring moment since encountering Annabelle. It was not, well, Marine is one treasuring moment, a new friend of mine, and in a way one could just say, well, I'll get to that part later. Another captivated treasuring moment was encountering lovely Penny. Penny, uh, oh my, I cannot tell you how fortunate I feel to have Penny as a good new friend in my life. In the same way, I'm fortunate to have Annabelle as a good new friend in my life. And Penny, like Maureen, she's American, but they live in different states. I think, no, Penny is a Wisconsinite, as is my good new friend Ellie. Penny's interesting, but had gone through a lot, the poor lady. I couldn't tell you how sorry I felt for her. I'm not going to tell you what happened, but... Well, well, maybe a few depths, of, a few slight small insights, but I'm only going to leave it at that, you know. Because it actually it did upset me quite a lot, as much as it upset Penny herself. You know, because I mean, you know, she lost her poor dog, Rocco. And, and then, obviously, I think her brother had some sort of health trouble, that sort of thing. And because I remember it was Destiny was asking after Penny's brother and... And Penny was like, he's doing okay, but I don't think he could leave hospitals. I don't know what it was, but I think there was some sort of trouble going on health-wise, quite possibly. But I'm not going to say the full thing, because it's personal to poor, poor Penny. Oh, I mean, the poor lady, Penny. 
too much trouble for her, you know. Oh, you know, had I been sitting in a room with her talking about this to her, I wanted, I would have just wanted, I would just want to comfort Penny in every way possible. Comfort her, namely through hugs and cuddles. And, or affection, casually by uh, appropriate affection, in a way to comfort her, you know. I mean, the poor lady. To have gone through those things, I wouldn't explain it in full, because I actually was very, really, personally, very upset for poor Penny, in the same way Destiny and every one of us was, just to tell you a thing. Another treasuring moment since encountering Annabelle where there's Maureen, Penny, good, wonderful friends, new friends of mine. <coughs> Another one was encountering the wonderful and lovely Destiny. Oh my, have I much to tell you about Destiny. Eventually I'll have a lot to talk to you about her. Honestly, Destiny is wonderful, a very nice friend, and has quite a few times, or a great many times at least, made a live, some uh, live stream appearances within Annabelle's content. You know, and I, and when I saw what I looked like, oh my goodness, I was nearly knocked out by her appearance, I was almost completely knocked over to one side because I couldn't get over the, the sheer captivated depth of beauty she has. I mean, looking at her very appearance, the head of hair, the face, and the figure, you know, and the sense of dress style she had, you know, you know, she was just, one could say, Destiny is really a very stunningly pretty lady, as I so certainly think. Oh, really, no, she is just one heck of a stunningly pretty lady. And my good... <laughs> she, she is a little bit old for me. She is happily married, and she has got children herself, but... Uh, but if I'd met a much a lady that looked like Destiny, who was in my sort of age category, I would have an instant crush. <laughs> Sorry, Destiny, if it's a little too much. <laughs> if it's a little too much, my apologies. <laughs> uh, but that, and she's always very friendly to everybody. She's very well known within Annabelle's content. Uh... So, uh, yes, yes, she's always wonderful to, to be around with and have some friendly conversations with and all the rest of it whenever Annabelle is happily live streaming. Who else is next? Uh, other wonderful new friends, Hilaris or Hallie as we sometimes refer to her as. She's, um, she's very friendly. And she's a mother too, like that of Annabelle, Marine and Destiny. She's a mother too. A mother of, of a little six going on seven year old boy, as far as I'm certain, who is really just her adorable little boy to her. She, um, I, mean, I think she's one brilliant, brilliant mother. Hello, Hallie is. And there had been a rumour going around that she's partially Greek. Well, I... I don't know if she's partially Greek for certain. I will have to ask Hallie again, but at a right time I'd ask her. I wouldn't want to ask her when, when there are rumours going around that saying she's partially Greek and it's not completely confirmed in that sense. But... She's always a very good friend to interact with, Harry is, and goodness do I like her very much. 
she's she's always lovely to me whenever I talk to her. And you know, she's always very good to her little boy when it comes to his bedtime. You know, she's always reading him a story and always tucks him up and quite likely gives him a nice cuddle and a kiss before going to bed. You know, she's she really see she really has the epitomized um in a way, the way she was talking to me once about how how she raises her son, it greatly epitomized the uh, true essence of being a good mother, you know. And I think she is a good mother, despite having never met her in real life, nor, and I've never met her son or her husband or her parents. I really do truly believe she is a good mother. I certainly do indeed think that. And there's a nice lady called Amanda. She's very, she's means well. <laughs> she's got interesting humour and all that. But she's kind and well-meaning. We have Amanda who means well. So as a nice... And she said something very nice to me saying, Oh, Foxy, you're so charming. <laughs> said that to me on a fairly recent live stream, Annabelle did. And I was like, well, thank you, Annabelle, uh, Amanda. That's really nice of you. And, oh, it was only just this year I found out about this lady. This lady, the encountering was treasuring. Honestly, <laughs> I'm not going to cry on this one. In January, one January live stream Annabelle was do making and representing... I encountered one of the most philosophical and loveliest of ladies, who's really almost as lovely as that of Penny, Marine, Destiny, Helly and Amanda. She's lovely, she's really a very nice lovely lady, but she's really one of the most philosophical of my new friends I've encountered within the confines of Gregopedia and Annabelle's wonderful content. She's very philosophical. Quite a little bit reserved in one little side, as many of us can be reserved as pe as human beings within the core, de core de depth of our personality. So uh, there's nothing wrong with being a little bit reserved. I already mentioned she's very philosophical, but she is overall quite socially engaging and a very, very enormously friendly lady. This one, or this lady, is none other than that of Karen Morell. Oh my, have I much to tell you about Karen? Oh, was, was the encountering we had my, oh my, oh my, oh my goodness, what a lasting impression it's had on me. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, uh, it was treasuring the encountering, it was a good meet we had. The philosophical side Karen has you know, it's about certain physicalities or certain hereditary genetics. She has a philosophical side to nearly ev to everything in life. She looks at things very philosophically. And sometimes I find that to be a rarity in this day and age. And then I said a few things to her and... And I just and she was like, oh, you you lovely. That's what she said to me, that generally live stream. And I know she was on a live stream that I missed, but never mind. I wasn't all that bothered. Um, and honestly, when the live stream was over that generally, when we first encountered each other, I was just like, oh, I'm looking forward to having another conversed conversation with Karen 
we've got a friendship in our future. We've started talking a little bit and then it just goes bomb, an absolute bonding. And because of, and really because of the, the philosophy she's got in the highlight, in the core depth and the highlight of her personality, I think that's what really could have started our our bonding. I don't know if that's the full-blown reason, but I think that could be one side of the story as to why we get on so well. You know. And it was... Uh, and sometimes whenever Karen's not on the live stream, I'd be like... Sometimes I would uh, mention her a few times a lot, because I remembered another live stream that generally Karen wasn't on that live stream. It was about a week or so, or less than a week later or so. And I think Penny was on that live stream at that point, and I was, like, talking to not just Penny, but everybody about Karen. I mean, I just... I was so, you know... I was moved by our bondings and our encountering we had together. I was so moved. It had such... A, a lasting impact with a positive side effect to have gone with it that I just could not help but tell everybody about Karen herself honestly and I was just like and I was really just like I'm really looking forward to encountering her again Ooh. yes and uh, and recently Annabelle did a live stream and I actually tried to get on, but my internet connectivity was drastically diabolical. And that meant I was off and on and off, on and off about three, four times as the live stream was happening. And I was like, Do you know, I think I'm going to stay off the live. I said, I'm not going to, I mean, next time I do a live stream, I'm going to make sure my internet connection of connectivity, my, I'm going to make sure my internet connection centrally within its connectivity is far better next time that's what I said and um, <clears throat> I mean Annabelle wasn't too bothered I think I wasn't the only one who was having internet connectivity issues that very day I think it was Deborah who was also having internet connectivity issues that day too as she did try and go live at the same time I tried to go live on the stream yard with Annabelle herself. But hopefully another live stream, be it a Friday or Saturday or Sunday night live stream, or a live stream during the week, in the evening hours, UK time that is, I would definitely want to go on should Annabelle provide the invite link on the stream yard. And you never know, maybe I'll go on a live with Destiny on Annabelle's live, or Maureen, or Penny, or Amanda. If it was Karen, well, that's another story. Because it was that live, that the live stream, that previous Saturday live stream, before the recent one, where my internet connection was drastically diabolical, <laughs> to the point where I was on and off. <laughs> <laughs> where um, Cannon came on and as soon as Cannon came on Annabelle saw that Cannon came in and she, and she said that I was looking for her I don't I wouldn't say I was looking for her no I was just asking after her that's all <laughs> and because I wasn't in the comments section at the time I didn't explain to Annabelle saying, I wasn't looking for Karen, I was just asking after her, that's all. And she's a good friend, I was going to say that sort of thing. And I think it was Marine who also said that I... <laughs> People came under the impression I was looking for Karen, I wasn't looking for Karen, I was just asking after her, that's all. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't do anything bad to the lady, I love the lady Karen very very dearly. I would never want to do anything bad or sinister to her, not in the slightest, no. And then I think Karen said something like, what was it that Foxy wanted me for? Or did he want me for something? Or was he just being a flirt? 
<laughs> Honesty. <laughs> that was really quite funny. But I was just saying, well, I was I really wanted to say something different. I was gonna try and say something different. I was saying, I was just gonna be curiously I was just curiously asking after you, Canon. That's all, you're a good friend. I did explain to Canon that the encountering we had that well at least I think so, I have to check the replay. I think I did tell her that I, the encountering we had back in January of 2024 had a lasting impression on me. And I said that I wanted to, the next time I ever encountered you on a live stream Annabelle was making um, and hosting, that I would want to introduce her to some of my friends who were absent from the live stream on the, from the very time that we were both on it, when we watched and participated in all the fun. And she was like, she was like, Foxy, that's lovely. And she was like, oh, you're such a flirt. And then, she, and then she ended up teasing me by saying, oh, Foxy, you're a little tinker. <laughs> what a tease she is. I don't, I mean, she did see what I looked like when I attempted to go on and off on the live stream. And... I do know what Tinker is, by the way. It's like a mischievous person, particularly that of a young child or a young teenager or a grown-up of a young age. Just saying. Also, Tinker means somebody who makes a living by uh, mending things and all that. It's got two meanings, Tinker, by the way. And I think... And I think Karen herself meant referred to me as being a tinker, being that of a mischievous young person. Could, you know, I don't think it ever occurred to Karen that uh, I was on, that I'm only a 22, nearly 23-year-old man. Well, she's over the age of 50, believe this or not. She had her birthday fairly recently, and I, once I found this out, I was like, oh, well, happy birthday. And I, I, and then I said some other things to her, and she was like, "Oh, Foxy, you're very kind." I was like, "As I, as are you, Karen. We'll always love you. You, you have friends on here who will always love you." I think I, or something like that. What I said. No, you know, she is. She really did say some nice things about me, though she was teasing me quite a bit. Well, I mean, we, it's always good to have a little tease. She wasn't being... I don't know if she was being serious or not when she said that I was a little tinker. Well, I'm not a little man. If I was little, I'd be a little boy, like little boys hide. I mean, well, I'm only a five foot eight inch man. And that does not make me little, no. I mean, I'm not the tallest of men, I know. But I'm certainly not little. I'm half a foot taller than that of Annabelle. And I'm also taller than that of Marine and Destiny, given their little five foot four inch height. Well, it's average for an, for an lady, you know. But it was a funny sort of teasing moment um, Karen had with me when she said I was a little tink. <laughs> oh, but, oh, but she's lovely. No, I love her dearly. In the same way that I love Penny, Marine, Destiny, uh, who else? Uh, Hallie and Amanda. I love them very dearly too, particularly Karen as well. No, they're, they're truly wonderful friends. All of my friends within Annabelle's content since finding out about it. Um, I just love them all. They're all wonderful. And Sapper, who's really, I originally I've encountered him through Graham and Fiona and Trevor, he even watches Annabelle from time to time, too. <coughs> Just to say. Uh, so, yes. Yes. The main representation is it's she's very quite good with psycho, psych, psychic uh, tarot reading, not psycho psychic. Complete difference of those th sides, you know. 
It's not, it may not be everybody's uh, milk and biscuits, um, psychic tarot reading content. And even though it's not something I would personally profess or possess myself into doing for content, it's always something I would more or less possess myself into being a listener for, just to say. But encountering Annabelle was valuable. I encountered Annabelle through Hutchie and Mel, or the Hutches, as Annabelle sometimes lovingly refers to them as. It was through the Hutches that I found out about Annabelle herself, and since encountering Annabelle I have never walked away from her content. I have never walked away from sporadically viewing her content. In the same way I have never walked away from viewing Graham and Fiona's content, or Trevor's content, or Hutchie and Mel's content. I have never walked away from those wonderful people. I'm just so extremely fortunate and thankful to have them in my life as my good new friends. I must say, Annabelle, and certainly you, Gregopedia, too, we all very, very much appreciate you enormously, and certainly do we heartily cherish the friendship we have with you most sincerely, and indeed, do we always look forward to your content, especially if there's a special live stream one UK evening time, that sort of thing. And, and always the most exciting whenever there's a special live stream where we're just horsing around and have a lack of tarot readings on. Maybe a few tarot readings and bits and pieces, but some of those moments and some horsing around, messing around <laughs> moments, that sort of thing. The most exciting part is when there's the uh, live stream StreamYard invite because you know that happens one of us is going to come on <laughs> I'm looking forward to that next moment <laughs> for sure because I love going on a live stream with other YouTubers I've just grown to love it since going live with Trevor Colt and also Graham and Fiona back in uh, February of um, of 2024 that was the most brilliant and the most valuable. But uh, thank you. Yes, yes, I hope each and every one of you enjoyed watching this. I certainly do recommend Annabelle's content, but it may not be your liking your cup of your, your milk and biscuits. It may not be everybody's milk and biscuits, but give it a try if you're interested. The link to Annabelle's channel will be found in the description below. And I have to say, Annabelle, yourself and Gregopedia certainly do deserve to be one of the most recommended YouTubers for 2024 indeed. Thanks everybody indeed for watching, and I shall certainly see you in the very next video. Ta-ta, another time. From Foxy. <laughs> Oh. Uh -huh.